Hello everyone and welcome back to Rainbow Crafts. My name is Colton and today we will be making for you our Fresh Aloe and White Lily soap. This soap is near and dear to our hearts and that is because this is the first ever soap that we ever tried to make. It was from a Brambleberry kit that came with the fragrance, the pre-made soap oil mixture, the lye, everything you needed except for a bowl and a hand mixer and those sorts of things. And we bring it back every year around the beginning of the year just to kind of celebrate and show how far we have grown. It also is just a good all around floral kind of scent, but it's really fresh. It's in the name and it's just a really good fragrance oil all around. So we have blended up our plant-based oils with our lye water, our sodium lactate, and then we've put in our colloidal oatmeal slurry as well. And now we will add that fresh aloe and white lily. We will add that fragrance oil along with some kaolin clay that's suspended in the fragrance oil. This helps anchor your scent. So this fragrance oil is not very fragile. It doesn't um, dissipate when it gets exposed to heat like some, but it just helps the fragrance stick around a little bit longer. And for more subtle scents or more um, volatile scents, it helps kind of anchor it because the clay basically pulls in those scent molecules. Um, and so it's just a really nice way to make sure that your fragrance stays as true to what it smells like out of the bottle as, as possible. It's what we do for all of our soap bars. The technique that we are using to add color is basically the technique that was in that first soap making kit that we got. So you basically add incremental amounts of a color. So we are using, um, I think it's apple green mica from Brambleberry. And I added a teaspoon of the color to the large soap main soap batter that I have here and I am just going to hand whisk that because since we're doing a three layer soap design I don't want it to accelerate and we will pour a third of that soap batter into our slab mold here. I don't know why my soap mold was so kind of funky. It didn't want to fit very well so that's why the sides look kind of all messy like that. But then once we've added in a third of the soap batter, we will add in a, another tablespoon of the color. We want to have a nice gradual change from light green to a darker green. This is a generally a light green soap, but we want to have that fun graduation in color. Like a lot of green soaps, what it looks like in person, especially at this stage, is not what that final product is going to look like. It tends to be not as true to the end color, and you'll see that here um, in a minute or so when we actually cut into this. Since the soap batter is still a little liquidy and I want a nice crisp line, I am pouring soap batter over our spatula there to break the fall and it just helps kind of dissipate the the force of the soap batter coming out of the um the cambro so you get that nice clean even layer you can see here it's getting a little thick which isn't anything to worry about we're almost done we do want to make this as flat as possible, so I'll be scraping that with my spatula there, kind of evening everything out. Set that aside, and then we will pour in the remainder of that green mica, which is suspended in a little bit of our soap oil recipe, or soap base. We will just scrape down the sides here. We do want the final layer to be as solid a green as possible so we want to make sure that everything is blended in well. This is a really easy technique just generally speaking. It looks really impressive which is a nice addition and you can't really go wrong. We've done this with a um, activated charcoal soap so it was light gray to, to darker gray almost black. We've done this with a blue mica as well to get a nice like watery effect. 
even though the soap batter is pretty thick now in the mold and also in the cambro, I'm still going to break the fall. I don't want to have all of our work of making sure we were very cautious in pouring go to waste, but I will be scraping out that container. I maybe could adjust the ratios just a tad to have it more evenly dispersed between the three layers, but it's not so important to this design to have them even, so I didn't want to measure out three individual bowls of soap batter to do this effect that's additional dishes and no one wants extra dishes. We will smooth out the top of the soap here, and we are going to do a really fun and easy design on the top, and it is just going to be using a fork. So we will be scraping the fork along the soap batter horizontally. It's a really easy technique. It actually was in the first soap instructions as well. It's kind of hard to see on this camera just because of the lighting and the shine, but when we cut this, you definitely will see those nice, it's kind of like a ridged potato chip. The main kind of fussy thing with this is you do have to be at a good consistency, so you can't have the soap be too runny, but you also can't have it be too thick because it'll get all gunky and you don't get those nice clean lines with that fork. Once we have finished that design, I will spritz the top with some rubbing alcohol and put the lid on this and tuck it away for 24 hours until it is ready to demold. And now 24 hours later, it is time to take that soap out of the slab mold. A good way to know if your soap is ready to demold outside of waiting 18 to 24 hours is if the sides come away clean from that slab mold or the silicone mold. The side should look kind of shiny. If it is too sticky, it kind of adds texture to the side of your soap and it also leaves soap residue in the mold. The mold should look pretty clean when you take that soap out of that soap mold. We did have some issues when we were originally formulating this final oil blend that we now use. Um, because we did remove palm oil really early on in our soap making journey, it was a little difficult to get that hardness that you want to have it set up correctly and release from the mold correctly. We're definitely at that spot now. Um, and it gives you nice, clean, straight sides, no irregular textures or anything like that. And now we are slicing away. So you can see that nice graduation in color. And even now cutting this to when we sell this, so 30 days later, you'll see that the color changes drastically. It brings a little more yellow to that color and it's not as blue. It's also not quite as muddy. So in a couple minutes, a minute maybe, you'll see the final product and you'll see what I'm talking about. The original recipe of this had some sort of dried flour on the top, whole dried flour, and we did remove this from future versions because it would just fall off in the shower. It also, if you didn't have a super brightly lit bathroom, kind of would look like a spider on the ground, and that was not a fun surprise. We don't like spiders in this house. Anyways, this soap will be for sale May 1st online and at any in-person event, so definitely get yours while you can. If you would like to support the channel, we do have a subscription service. You could be a foamy homie or a suddy buddy and get discounts on soap and also your name at the end here, so definitely check that out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see what Rainbow Crafts comes up with next. Bye.